You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Welcome back to CS Live. <laughs> I am Phil Nickinson. This is CS Live. I run a little thing called Android Central. Did you know that? I did not know that. You are Callie Lewis. Yes. You do a little thing called Geek Beat TV. I, I didn't know that either. We are doing the CES Live thing. We're we're a good team. I think we because we uh, we There's have so fun many, together. Like, There's lights and flashy things and people yelling at me. I know, right? It's down there like go. They're like go, get Phil, ready to go. go. And, well, I'm ready, but no. <laughs> It's all right. It's and all right. Smile. I got a smile. That you don't understand how hard that is for me. Smile. A little more show, energy. Show the camera how much smiling you can do. That, that That's it. <laughs> looks That's like it. angry That's all I can Phil. Do, guys. <laughs> that looks yeah. like angry. That Phil. wasn't really smiling. So <laughs> I'm gonna have fun with this one, okay? Hey, we should be having fun with all of them, but of we're gonna have extra fun with this one. We got my pal Joe Braidwood from Swiftkey here. Joe and I go way back. Actually, we went. I think in Barcelona, wasn't it? That's where we met. We were at the launch of the HTC Desire. Yeah. Back in wow, that was like oh, 2010. Yeah. Well, I thought it was like 2005. No, no I no. sat awkwardly <laughs> next to joking. him and I said, like, do you mind if I sit next to you? And I had no idea who he was. And I was just like, oh, this is cool. And it was like when HTC had a small tent and they were like, this is the best phone ever. That's and then awesome. we, we bonded over it. it yeah. You've bonded so much. You're now wearing his uh, his uh, little button right there. Yes. Woohoo! Yes. I like that. It has the Android guy. Oh, by the way, um, for those of you who don't know, so that's uh, Android Central's uh, little logo. His name is Lloyd, by the exactly, way. Exactly. That's we what I was him. about to ask you. Yes. Lloyd. And that came from viewer submissions, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That is the most incredible, like, roaming camera <laughs> I've ever seen. I know. So this is our VisiWig camera uh, because, well, we're using the iographer and the VisiWig app, which actually, oh, we're recording right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dave. Having fun back there. But it allows us to get up close and personal with uh, what we're doing. And it does so much more. This app actually is really incredible. Anyway. <laughs> I like sorry. it. Sorry. Let's talk because that's actually why, I mean, we could go on I'm for, that's my to, job. Yeah, for days of, about our exploits. But the, for everybody who doesn't know SwiftKey, give me like the 30 second spiel. Imagine a world where you could type on a phone without it sucking. That's oh. what we do. <laughs> yeah. None nice. of the. You know, when you write duck and you actually mean another word, none, none of the aw awkward texts you're on, all that stuff. So wait, 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 are you telling me that SwiftKey would put damnyouautocorrect.com out of business? No, but we, we, we've been thinking about this for a while. <laughs> and I felt bad at first. I was like, oh my God, have we, have we invented some technology that's actually gonna stop humor on the internet? Right. But, um, fortunately, we think there have been so many instances of autocorrect fails posted on that website that that's a good archive, let's put it that way. You know what happens every time I try to type my name? What's you know that? what it suggests next? Phil Collins. Nice. Every single time. That's Not SwiftKey, but a regular. No, SwiftKey. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's, my, that's actually my fault. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Really He's like, <laughs> I'm going to mess with Phil. So we, we've seen a lot of iterations of SwiftKey over the years. Yeah. Uh, this year, or I guess last year now, we've had SwiftKey Cloud, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Syncs your predictions, because uh, it learns along with you. Yeah. And so now you can take that with you to multiple devices. Which is big for someone like you, because every time I me. see you, you have a new phone. Yeah. It's, and yeah. if you let me know where I can get a Bamboo Moto X, I will get Moto one. Motomaker.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That or, is. Mm, uh, no, see it, I'm taking it home with me. Yeah, that is it's actually <laughs> one of my the worst things about doing, um, you know, new reviews of, of phones is having to go through the process yeah. of learning that new system. And so we, we we knew well we were doing two things when we did this. We were we were helping the real guy out there who loses his or her phone and you know has that moment where like God, ah, <laughs> I've lost everything that I've ever worked for in a device. Right. Um, but also, we knew that journalists like you folks are switching devices probably Constantly. every three days. I mean, I, I vividly remember seeing Phil in New York, and he had about, what, like five phones in his pocket. We went for dinner. We does. played the mobile stack game, or, you know, where you yes. stack them in the middle. Normal people, it was like the Empire State Building. Yeah, for <laughs> normal people, they have a phone and a tablet, but yeah. you don't want to lose that prediction on one or the other. You guys have also branched out, and you have uh, your, I call it the medical keyboard, or the keyboard yeah. from the medical industry. Yeah. So. Really, what's that? SwiftKey Healthcare, it's, it's very simple. Um, think of a good context where you might want to use a tablet, and you might want to be typing something that's complicated. M the medical profession is one of those. What we did was we built something that understands the context of the language that you might use while making medical notes. 
And that means that rather than having to carry around clipboards and have tons of paper and all that kind of stuff, you can simply use a device, make notes, and away you go, and it, it simplifies the whole process. That's awesome. And here at CES, you're actually kind of getting into another segment, yeah. sort of. I mean, it's still Android, it's still touchscreen based, yeah. and it's right here, we, can show, we can't show it to you right now. Uh, it's, it's one of those devices that is, is still coming off the construction lines. But yeah, we, we partnered with Clarion to build a, an Android head unit for a car, so you put it where your stereo would normally be, okay. and it doesn't just do cool music tunes. I just went and saw it this morning, actually. Yeah. So it's it's a double-din unit, you know, it's it's one okay. of those nice big, about the size of a tablet, right? Yeah. Um, it's stock-ish Android, it's running, you know, some kind of... I think it's gingerbread, but it's, they it's hacked into it. They hacked right. into it, because one of the things that we don't think about when, you know, it's like, oh, it's just like a tablet mounted in the stereo. Right. There are a ton of compliance rules around yeah. car safety. So yep. when you're driving, it has to switch itself so that you can't interact with it yep. unless you're doing GPS, all that stuff. So it, it takes quite a long time, but we're really pumped to be able to bring you know, the interactivity of SwiftKey to the in-car environment so that folks who you know, are trying to type in that address or search for a piece of music or whatever it is, in the car, that friction is now is gone. It, does it have SwiftKey flow? So am I, am I tracing yeah. across it? Okay, yeah. okay. We've, 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 we've talked about, about SwiftKey, it's, it's but time to uh, show you Swift yeah, I want to see what it is. Too many days in then, Vegas, I left my device Swift over there. And also SwiftKey flow, so what the difference is We can is show you that, that here. So here's the basic SwiftKey keyboard, and I don't really customize all that much. You can do different it's colors. It's the Cobalt theme, which is a very, very pretty default theme. Right, and then you just start, you can start tracing if you want to do different words. It thinks I'm writing Sizzler, or, or you just start typing, right? And it's very, very simple keyboard. I still love the layout. They've gone a little flat. Uh, in the design, and it looks really nice, and it's just super simple to use, and it's the prediction that's the big deal. Yeah, so Callie, the thing that you probably won't understand having, I guess, not used it. Oh, no, I've, a, oh, I've used it. Oh, you've used I'm it. I'm just right. playing devil's advocate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> everyone, and actually, I, everyone, I do like it. <laughs> Callie before was like, so, swipe, swift key, what's the difference? For us, the, the key comes down to that context of, of words. You know, yep. it's, it's being really capable in terms of what would Phil say on a Saturday morning when he's like, oh, what am I doing today? And it will just understand because it, it's learned from you everything you ever typed. And it at, learns from everybody else too. So yeah. it actually takes right. what I type, adds it to your predictions, which in hilarity it's Which is why Phil Collins became so pro. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it, we're very, very careful about privacy okay. and anonymity. I can't even say that word. Yes. But the, the, the key really is, you know, if you could always learn from everything you ever did, rather than having to manually say, add to dictionary, add to dictionary. Right. Because um, everyone's so, you know lazy, they don't want to be you know, going through all these hoops to try and get a good keyboard. What we're doing is learning from everything you ever do, so that it, it, it can just predict and tailor to you a really great typing experience. So in, in Swipe, I know a lot of our audience ha has played uh, with Swipe, um, and, and a lot of them are saying Swift Key is, is also great as well. Um, <laughs> We've lost Swift Kelly's audio. Keep, has you anybody keep talking. seen Kelly's audio? Anybody oh, okay, out now there? I've, no? I've okay. come back. It is live TV, and I did say everything was going fantastically earlier. So, what hey, did what did I say? <laughs> All right. So, you, when you when you when you uh, create a word, gesture input. Um, it if you if it's something that the dictionary doesn't recognize, you do have to you don't you don't have to add it to the dictionary. No, so you, is that what you're if saying? If you're if you're using a continuous input gesture, yes, you have to make sure that it already knows that that word. Right. Right. But if it doesn't recognize it, it will shake its head at you. Correct. It, okay, it, let's it really is highly customizable too. So you've got SwiftKey Cloud, which is a big deal. It, it ties into your, you know, whatever account you want to sync to, in, into your Google account. Right. You do other accounts? I'm trying to remember. Is it just um, So you can personalize from Google, Facebook, Twitter, right. Yahoo. We we use the Google account as the auth token because right. everyone who has an Android device in Google Play has a Google account. Languages is a huge deal. Yeah. Yes. We support over 60 languages and you yep. can enable more, more than one in context. So if you are bilingual, let's say you're Canadian French, you can speak in English and Canadian French at the same time. Yeah. And it will switch between Back them without you having to choose it. That's uh, fantastic. And that's pretty cool. And, and the stats are fun too. So here it's it's showing me a couple of things. It says I'm 25% <laughs> more efficient because I'm it, it typing things to SwiftKey. Not, right. not typing things, but typing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the heat map is actually, let's see if it's going to work, uh, really old feature. Will it, it will show you, you know, where you're typing. Right? Well, Wi-Fi probably issues. Yeah. Um, you know, show you how many typos you fixed. And That's awesome. And yeah. So it's, and my Bluetooth share has stopped. 
Oh, so no. It's no, classic CES. <laughs> I know, right? And just to answer your question, Kelly, yeah. if, you, if you're gesturing a word and it doesn't know it, what you can do is just stop continuously inputting it, type it, and it will come up in yep. the prediction bar. The second you choose it, it will learn it. And so it's as easy as just typing and choosing the words that you want, and yeah. over time it, it will learns. tailor itself to you. Yeah. Well, We've uh, consolidated down to one app as well. I didn't realize that until till recently. Yeah, we, we did that quietly. <laughs> no, more, no more separate tablet app from, yeah, the, so from the Yeah, so way good, back good. when the Motorola Zoom came out, um, we partnered with Google uh, to try and build a really cool experience on a tablet. And at the time, it made a lot of sense for that to be a distinct app. But what happens is, you know, over uh, over the sort of next few iterations of Android, they consolidated Honeycomb, and what they launched was a sort of all-in-one Android operating system, which made a ton of sense. Right. So what we've finally done is we've we've consolidated SwiftKey tablet and SwiftKey, um, mostly also because you know you have a is that the the Note the Note three, three yeah. yeah. Those kind of devices, are they phones, are they tablets? Right. Please don't say phablet. No, 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 no. I, I, no. I don't even allow that word on my show. Yeah, so the <laughs> idea is that you know, there's, a, there's a ton of different ways that you want, might want to configure your keyboard given the size of the screen. What we thought was why, why, why call it a tablet product, why call it a phone product? Let's just let you undock the keyboard if you want, resize yeah. it if you want, and it will work with you yes. to help you type. Where can Kelly get SwiftKey? Uh, <laughs> Google Play, yeah, yep. Amazon App Store. And Android Pit, which is good for German users if, if you're out there because they don't have credit cards. So well, there you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for joining us and, and showing us SwiftKey. You guys go check SwiftKey out. Uh, you know, always with these types of new keyboards, you always have to give it a few days in order to get used to it. Although I have to say, with SwiftKey, uh, um, it's it's pretty easy to get used to. You know, I mean, you kind of pick it up like that as soon as you kind of get over the mental block of having to type each letter out. <laughs> so, go test that out. If you have any questions. Uh, Phil is your personal assistant and will help you out. I'm sorry, I'm just joking. <laughs> He's like, what? Here come the emails. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. No, I mean, my job is to listen to feedback, so if anyone wants to. I'll just uh, forward them all to you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just auto forward <laughs> anything with Swiftkey and Phil Nickinson. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we would love to hear from you guys. We would love to you know, build things that you want, so definitely get in touch with us. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, you have a great rest of the CES. We I'm only have a few right. hours left. <laughs> I bet you are. Um, as are we, although I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to be sad stopping to use my VisiWig cam. These, Is it not working? Did we kill it? No, no, I mean, the after CES. Oh, after CES. Because it's our roving Z Z Z VisiWig cam. Well, you can use but it. But you know what? People, well, people haven't, um, if you don't know what VisiWig is, so this is actually an application that allows us to do everything we're doing down here, that's Dave Curley, with all of that equipment uh, by switching cameras and all of that, you can do that with this app. Um, you can take different iOS devices, connect them to this app, and switch back and forth between them live and, and then edit it or whatever you need to do. You can bring in graphics and all sorts of cool stuff. You hey! can shoot Kelly live at CES. You can shoot. And uh, it, is, it is a great app. Go check it out if you're doing any type of video on the go. Uh, $29.99. But we are also giving away free codes. $29.99 is totally worth it for everything it does. Um, and you can go to geeky.tv slash giveaways to see how you can win those codes. All right. I'm going to go. We're going to go find some more stuff, and we'll be right back right after this. Don't move. I'm Phil Nickinson. <laughs> I'm Callie Lewis. Bye. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs>